All righty. So let's um, let's do a little bit more. Uh, this is the continuation of uh, what we did in the first part, and um, let me switch to document camera. <clears throat> All right. So so this here is um, this is lecture one B. What we looked at uh, the other day was um, starting to look at derivatives. Started to look at derivatives, and um, there are lots of them. Uh, what we're going to be looking at uh, for now is the uh, the forward. It's the forward contract. The forward contract. So there are lots of derivatives. We're going to look at a bunch of them uh, throughout the course. We're going to start with the uh, the forward contract. So there are. Um, so what are the characteristics? Right, there's some. There's some underlying. There's some underlying asset. So it could be um, it could be a stock. It could be um, like the uh, exchange rate to pounds, as we talked about in the last lecture. Exchange rate. It could be uh, it could be the temperature. Temperature. So you grow uh, oranges in Florida, you are quite concerned about temperature fluctuations. So you could be interested in temperature. I can't spell this morning. Temperature. There could be many things. There's some underlying asset. Assets would probably be in quotation mark because temperature is not an asset, but there's some underlying. Um, random quantity that um, and <clears throat> that we are sensitive to so it could be stock prices and exchange rate temperature so that's it's called a derivative because there's an underlying uh, there's an underlying uh, source of randomness that this derivative depend upon so that's one feature so another feature is that the it's free it's free to enter uh, a forward. So you don't have to pay any money up front. It's free to enter a forward. You do not pay to enter one. You can enter, and there are two types. There's a long and a short. Long and short forwards. We'll get back to what the what those two words they mean. It's just a question of a plus or a minus sign, but the free to enter. Um, and then there's a payoff, there's one payment time. One payment time, which is at the end of the period. Um, so at the end, capital T is always the end of, uh, uh, the end of the period, uh, the end of the, the timeline that we're looking at, and that, uh, and this one here could be the payoff. This could be both. It could be both uh, positive and negative. It's a random. It's a random quantity. So this payment here that we're talking about that you're going to get at the end, this could be both positive and negative. This is a random variable. And it's given by the randomness that's coming from this underlying quantity, like the stock, the exchange rate, the temperature. Okay, so let's try to look at this in a specific example. 
<clears throat> this is the example that Hall, uh, he also uses this as an example. This is from Hall. Uh, so say, say that is T, this is, um, this is the price. Uh, this is the price of pounds. This is English, the, uh, the British, uh, British currency uh, in uh, dollars, the US currency, right? So this is an exchange rate. This is called FX. This is a foreign exchange, foreign exchange. Just called FX. <clears throat> so what we're looking at is we, and this thing is random, right? We don't know what the price is going to be at time capital T. So this is at at the end, right? So S capital T denotes that exchange rate uh, between pounds and dollars at that future time point. And so let's pretend that we have a model. So let's pretend we have the binomial model that looks like. I'm sitting here at time zero and then I'm looking out into the future. And there are two possibilities. The exchange rate can be, uh, in this example from Hall, the exchange rate can go up to $1.50 uh, for one pound sterling. Or it can be lower at 1.4 for one pound sterling. <clears throat> so this is a uh, this is a binomial model. We'll see a lot more about binomial models. This is a binomial model. Remember, remember the stochastic calculus for finance one textbook, the binomial asset pricing model. Like that's the binomial model we're seeing here. There, it's binomial because there are two, there are two possible, there are two possible values for the random quantity. In this case, is cap t. You could also have had a trinomial model. There, there are many other, uh, so other models, uh, other models include, uh, other models include like three values, three values for ST. So that's called a trinomial model. You could also have here that uh, you could have that ST would be Gaussian. ST is Gaussian. So uh, you would write ST and then there's a wiggle and then you'd have a normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared. You're going to start seeing these Gaussian distributions appear in your homework. They are quite important for quant finance, and I'd like you guys to start getting used to them. Uh, you'll see a lot of that when you get into uh, 622, uh, because this is what is underlying like the Brownian motion. But what it means to be Gaussian is it means that if I look at the distribution, so the probability that S capital T is less than some number X, you can calculate that. You can calculate that by doing what? Well, we stand at first, we switch it over so it becomes a standard normal. So we will do what? We will subtract, we will subtract S T mean mu, and then we'll divide by this one here is the variance, right? So we should know this one here. This is the mean. 
and this here is the variance sigma squared. <clears throat> so I'll subtract the mean and I'll divide by the standard deviation. There's no square here. So this will be less than x minus mu divided by sigma. Right? And then we will use this property of the Gaussian that this quantity here, then we'll use this quantity here. This is going to be standard normal. This quantity here, this is going to be standard normal with mean zero because we subtracted the mean away and then we divided by sigma. So we're going to get a standard normal here. So what this shows here is that this is equal to a standard normal less than some threshold. A standard normal, well, we'll have to integrate from minus infinity up to the point x minus mu divided by sigma. And then the standard normal density. The standard normal density is one over root two pi. And then it'll be e to the minus one half y squared. But this here is the this is the standard normal uh, density function. This is the standard. This is standard normal mean zero variance one. So that would be another model for what uh, the foreign exchange rate could be. This one here is Gaussian. So in this case, it's real value. So it could also be negative, right? You're integrating from minus infinity up to this threshold here. Um, you probably don't want to have that for your uh, exchange rate. Um, so another possibility is to say that um, Log is T is Gaussian. Because then is T, this T and this forces, this forces is T to be positive. And if you do that, this here is, uh, this is like the Black Scholes model. This is a Black Scholes type model. This one up here, this is a Bachelet type model. Those are just names that you will see because uh, those, those are names. The Bachelet name is something that will come up in quantum finance. Black Scholes, you've probably already heard of. Uh, Bachelet's model, this was back to the 1900. Uh, Black Scholes, this was much later. I think 73, or 70 years later, when Black Scholes came up with their idea. <clears throat> and the big difference is that in one case, you have a uh, real valued uh, random variable, and the other one, you have a positive one. OK, so I don't mean to imply here that <clears throat> all exchange rate models, they just have this very simple structure. But given we're just looking at an example, uh, let's just stick to the one that Hall has, and there are just two possibilities. And this is an example of the binomial model, but there could be, I mean, here I wrote three others. And of course, you can come up with many other uh, yourself. Okay, so what does, uh, what does Hall say uh, in this particular model about uh, forwards? Well, <clears throat> so a long forward, remember the two names, is a long and a short forward. So a long forward, a long forward uh, has uh, payoff. Uh, and this is again at the end, right? that's the only time you get the payoff. It has this payment, instead of payment, you can I'll call it payoff here. Those means the same thing. So the payment could be payoff. <clears throat> a long forward has a payoff at the end, which is given by st minus k. 
and that's that k from last time uh, that we talked about like what would be a, a value of k that would make you uh, indifferent that would make you uh, enter this contract uh, at time zero without requiring requiring any payment at time zero so you're going to get this payment and so we can plot it it's always a good idea to to look at a picture perhaps and if we plot it we'll have on the x-axis we'll put the underlying price is capital T, which is the random uh, quantity. So ST minus K is what? Well, if K is say here, then, well, you'll intercept down here. That's the payoff, right? And you can see this payoff, it's positive. So it's positive if, um, ST ends up being bigger than K, but it is negative if ST ends up being less than K. And that was what I meant <clears throat> when I said here that it could be both positive and negative. It depends on what ST is, right? It's positive, it's positive if you are here. And it is negative if you are here. So that's a long forward. And this constant K here, K is a constant. K is a constant. And it's called the forward price. Remember, this, this can be misleading because um, it is free to enter a forward. So this can be a bit confusing. This can be confusing. This can seem confusing because, um, because it's, uh, It's free uh, to enter uh, a forward at uh, time zero. Nevertheless, this quantity K here uh, is referred to uh, as the forward price. And since everybody refers to it as a forward price, I'm, I'm gonna continue doing that. So that's that's the long forward, and so the the short forward is very similar, and the short forward. So short forward. Short forward. Short forward has payoff, uh, and it's it's always at. Uh, at the end, and the only thing that changes is that you, you put a minus sign in front. So you want to have k minus st. So now the picture changes, it flips. You want to look like this. So, so that's the short one, and this is a long. This is the long one. Okay, so let's get back to, to the example where we had the, the two possible values here. Uh, that could be, uh, it could be high at 1.5, it could be low at 1.4. So say, say that uh, in this example, if we say that uh, if K is, if k is equal to one point, this is the number from Hall, 1.4561, that's his number. Well then, then the long, the long forward uh, pays off, pays off uh, the two possibilities will be so it's the up price. This was 
and then minus the strike, which was 1.4561. You work it out. This is 0 0.0439. And this is positive. Right, so it pays out something positive in the up one. And then in the down one, it was 1.4 minus 1.4561. I'm dropping the dollar signs. And now we're going to get a negative sign. This is minus 0 0.0561. That's not right. Oh, let me just double check. I'm going to write the wrong numbers here. I wrote this down incorrectly. Just redo the calculation 1.4 minus. 1.4561. Yeah, looks good. Sorry. Um, good. This one here is negative. This one here is negative. Right, so as we had said, as we had said, <coughs> in in a forward, there's a chance for both a positive and a negative payout. So it's free to enter out here, the value at time zero, this is a zero, and out here at the end, you can get, you can get money and you can lose money, right? There's a chance to go up, there's a chance to go down. If you go up, you get a positive payment. If you go down, you have to pay. Okay. So, um, so that was a bit about uh, forward. Right? So the so to price a forward. So to price a forward. Uh, in general, so outside this example. To price it forward in general, our job is to find uh, is to find this k such that such that the value uh, at time zero is zero. We could, for example, have chosen a different K here. If I would move this K up to like, I don't know, instead of 1.46, if I would put 1.46 here, right, then I would change these two values. And then what kind of a value would I get out here? Um, why is it that this one is the correct one? So, so here the question is, what makes what makes k equal to one point four five six uh, the correct uh, forward price? Uh, why not? Why not, for example? One point say four six. Right, so that's that's something that we have to, uh, with the information that you have available, there is no way to determine uh, that this one here is the correct one. But what we're going to be doing uh, when we look at uh, forward contracts in, you know, over the following months, it is always going to be it's going to be our job to create this K. So there'll be more information available, and then based upon that, uh, more information like how do we figure out what K is? <clears throat> okay. The other thing that we then introduced last time at the very end was we started criticizing uh, forwards, and um, and so let me uh, let me introduce. 
an improvement, at least in some dimensions, on forwards. These, um, these contracts are called futures. Futures. And the, um, the standard joke The standard joke is, um, is to say that futures the equals uh, forwards and minus uh, trust. So, so that's the standard joke. Um, and what does that mean? Okay, so let's let's try to think about that. Sorry to think about this, and this goes back to the criticism that we discussed last time. Um, so say, say uh, you entered, say you entered a forward, uh, with payoff, so it's a long one. Say we enter the uh, forward would pay off um, st minus k, right? So this is a long forward. And um, the time horizon here, t, is equal to one year. <clears throat> right, so we're sitting. Look at it over time. So this is time t. Right, so we're looking here. This is capital T, which is equal to one year. So we should write this as time in years. Right, and we're sitting over here time zero. Right, so I'm going to get this payoff at the end. So what happens is that you get, so you get. You get ST and pay K. But of course, in between here, in between here, there'll be a bunch of time points. There'll be uh, there'll be S, there'll be T1, T2, T3, and so on. There'll be uh, T1, T2, T3. There'll be a bunch of time points be between now and uh, one year from now. And um, what happens if, um, so say that <clears throat> the underlying, this S here, it just goes up. Say that S is one, is T1. So that's the stock price, if it's a stock price. Uh, that's the stock price at time T1. This is going to be less than the stock price at time T2. Going to be less than the stock price at time t three and so on. Say that it's it's been going like this up to say s uh, t seventeen, which is over here somewhere. So there have been a steady increase of this underline. Now what you you're supposed to get you're sitting out here now. This is where you're at, and you you're pretty close to the end, and the stock price has been going up, 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 up. And are you expecting to be paid is capital T a little bit later? And so you now worry and worry and worry if if your counterpart, if your counterpart, right? So the guy that's supposed to give you, right? Uh, e, e the person, the person or company uh, who is giving you this capital T, right? The counterpart who is giving uh, ST to you uh, can pay this much. Right. He was supposed to pay you S capital T, and then you were supposed to pay him K. And it's been going up, 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 and up. And now you're starting to worry that maybe he doesn't have the money to actually give you 
uh, is capital T. And if he doesn't have that, uh, well, he's going to default, and you won't get you won't get it. Maybe it'll default. So here comes the idea of a futures. Like this, this is a forward, which we just talked about. So here comes the idea of a futures contract. So the, uh, the new feature, the new feature of, um, of the futures, New features of the futures contract is um, is daily payments into a margin account. Give me all the bonus for escrow. Escrow. Escrow account. Okay, so <clears throat> this is where that word trust comes in. How much do you trust that this guy, he can actually pay you in a scenario where the stock price has been steadily increasing over time? Well, the futures contract seems to help, it seeks to help um, on this issue. And so here's how it goes. So for futures, For futures at um, at time zero, at time zero there is a um, there is a k zero. So that's that's just like in the forward contract, such that it's free to enter. So we turn to the futures. <clears throat> right, so at um, at time uh, T one, well, there's going to be another constant. At time T1, there's another constant, uh, and that's going to be and there's another constant. There's another constant um, that makes it free. Uh, to enter into the futures. So this year is at time zero. To enter the futures. And this year is at, is at time one. So there's, there's another constant, K1. That makes it free to enter the futures at that later time, and then on and on it goes. Uh, at time, uh, at time, at the end, uh, well, then the constant is going to be um, at at the end. We're going to have uh, the constant k uh, t is just going to be uh, uh, st beyond the line. In these Ks, these K0, K1, up to KT, which was ST, you call the futures bus. Here are the futures prices. 
Okay, so how does it how does it work? <clears throat> how does this margin account work? How does this margin account work? Let's try to work that out in an example. The mechanics are, and this is again an example. Example, this is again from Hall. <clears throat> the example he has, he, he says that uh, you want to enter, you're going to enter two gold futures. You're going to enter two gold futures. K0 is uh, 1250. And um, gold futures this year is per ounce. Um, each gold futures is on uh, each on a hundred ounces. So ounces is a way to measure uh, weight, and um, I think one ounce is about thirty grams of gold. Uh, don't kill me on this one, but it should be like thirty grams or so. Yeah, so in the US, uh, ounces, uh, it's confusing because you use ounces for different things. You also use ounces for liquid. Um, but you also use, yeah, so here, uh, gold is quoted uh, per ounce. Um, so at time, at time one, here comes a new feature of the futures. This is this uh, margin requirement. So what you do is you compare, you compare K zero, which is what we have here. And then the new futures price, the one that works at that time and K one. So you started out, it was free to enter. You enter two of these gold futures. And then <clears throat> at, um, <coughs> excuse me, then at time one, now you're, you're in, uh, you have these two gold futures, then uh, the settlement, the payment that you have to make into the bank is, um, right, so, so here there are no payments, no payments. So here there will be a payment and it depends on what K1 is. So say, say K1 ended up being in his example, in Hall's example, it ended up being that. Well then, then there's gonna be a loss. There's gonna be a loss of $9, right? Because it went from 250 to 1241. So there's a loss of $9 per ounce. And the number of ounces that you are dealing with is you have two gold futures, each worth a hundred. So you have 200. So this is a total of uh, nine times 200. Right? So this is 1800. And so now comes the, the payment. So there's gonna be a payment. This is called daily settlement. Daily settlement. You're going to deposit. You're going to deposit uh, minus eighteen hundred uh, into into the margin. And then you're going to move on. The, um, the alternative could be if we say, say instead, if I say instead that K didn't go down, but say it went up, 
if I if it instead went up by nine, so it would go up to one, two, five, nine. And then you will deposit eighteen hundred to the margin account. And then this will keep going. So every day this is going to happen. You're going to compare. You're going to compare uh, K1 and uh, K2. And you're going to keep doing this all the way down to uh, the last time step. Here you're going to compare. You want to compare the last, the last chip. Okay. It'll be a string of uh, these comparisons made, and depending on how how big the differences are, money will going in or going out of this margin account. And um, let me just show you the example. Uh, is a so again we we're looking at Hall's book, right? This is the tenth edition. Let me just look at <laughs> show you this uh, this example here worked out in um, for, for more than one period. This here is the like properly. Like, so what we're looking at here is um, you're gonna have uh, two contracts. You're gonna have two contracts and um, yeah, K0 was this 1250. And then it's unfolding. Uh, you can see how the days go every day. Um, every day there is a new, there's a new price. Uh, there's a new futures price and you have to look at the, the changes between them and compute whether you have a gain or a loss. And then what does it do? What does it do to your margin account balance? <clears throat> I didn't mention this, but this margin account balance, this is being held by a third party, some clearinghouse, and they will require uh, initial deposits uh, into uh, to be made here, right? And then you get the money back uh, when you're over. And if the, if the balance drops too far, then they're going to ask you to restock it. And uh, you see that happens a few times here. That is, that is just more practical, like uh, what is more important. The, the important thing here is that you start out, uh, you start out with uh, this twelve fifty, right? And then you look at, okay, so what was the price uh, before or at closing, right? So it closed, uh, it closed out that day at uh, one two uh, four one, right? So there was a uh, there was a loss. Uh, it was nine bucks per ounce, and there were two hundred ounces, right? So there's a loss of eighteen hundred. So that goes out of your uh, uh, your account, your escrow margin account. So it drops down uh, with these eighteen hundred, and then the next day is there going to be a loss? Well, there was a loss. Okay, so that goes out. Then the next day was there a loss of a gain? This time there was a gain. Okay, so then the balance goes back up, and it keeps going like this throughout the period, uh, throughout the period, and um, it runs until. Uh, it runs until uh, uh, there's a 16 day window in this particular example. Uh, yeah. So these these gains here, because they're these continuous, they're these daily settlements, um, it, it eliminates uh, quite a bit of risk um, because these uh, the money here in, in these accounts, this is being held by a third party. Uh, so the other part of this futures contract uh, will uh, will be able to get uh, will be able to get uh, the money back. Uh, this is a this is a safer way of doing it in terms of counting party risk. So this was a little bit about futures, and of course, our game uh, for us as as quants, um, our job is to find our job uh, would be. Uh, to uh, determine uh, K1 
k0, k1, up to uh, the last one, which is this team. Like why, why is this k0 equal to 1.250? Uh, why is K1 ending up at being 1.241 and, and, and so on? Uh, so, so we're not talking about that at this point. We, at this point, we're just talking about what the, the contract is like and the mechanics of it. Uh, but what we want to do ultimately is to be able uh, to write down a model that will tell us what the, um, the future price is. So this was, this was what I had to say about first two chapters in um, in Hall and I think I think this is a good place to stop uh, stop the, the first lecture and then next time hopefully that will be on Tuesday in person uh, we'll start talking about options um, and and we're going to be doing options over here uh, from Karas, uh, from Shreve's um, first chapter and so we're going to be looking at uh, section 1.1, the one period binomial model. Um, this is what we'll start out uh, on, on Tuesday morning. Alrighty, I, um, I hope to, um, I hope on Tuesday <laughs> to be back and giving the lecture live and I, I, I look forward to seeing everybody.